welcome to Movie Review Mom. I'm the mom and I do the movie reviews. And my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or sometimes both watching a specific film. So today, the movie I'm reviewing is called All Quiet on the Western Front. This very brutal action drama is now available on Netflix. It is definitely rated R. And I'll give you some tips for parents here in a minute. And it's two hours and 27 minutes long. My movie review mom grade is an A. Now I can't say I enjoyed it because it is so difficult to watch. However, I thought it was very well done. So I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell, and then I'll point out things I liked and didn't like, as well as offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about if you watch this with other people, interesting lines, funny lines, if there are any, and recommendations for other films that if you like those, I think you'll also like this and vice versa. All right, so in a nutshell, the story follows teenagers Paul Baumer and his friends Albert and Mueller, who voluntarily and excitedly enlist in the German army, riding a wave of patriotic fervor that quickly dissipates once they face the brutal realities of life on the front. Paul's front battle, you know, the front line. <laughs> Paul's preconceptions about the enemy and the rights and wrongs of the conflict soon crumble. However, amid the countdown to an armistice, Paul must carry on fighting until the end with no purpose other than to satisfy the top brass's desire to end the war on a German offensive. This brutal World War I movie was directed by Edward Berger. It's the most expensive German film ever made for Netflix. It's also the third version of this story. The original movie, All Quiet on the Western Front, won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1930. I'm assuming this new version will be nominated because of its technical skill and, and some of the other things that I'll mention here in just a minute. Of course, all three movies are based on the best-selling novel from many decades ago. Eric Maria Remarque wrote this in the foreword to his famous novel. He said, quote, this book is to be neither an accusation nor a confession, and least of all, an adventure, for death is not an adventure to those who stand face to face with it. It will try to simply tell of a generation of men who, even though they may have escaped shells, were destroyed by the war. So there were a lot of things I liked or just thought were really well done about this movie. First of all, my husband's grandfather served in World War I in the American Army. He kept a very detailed journal that we've read with our four sons. His written words are sobering and heartbreaking. Because he was a runner who carried messages along the front lines, uh, that the front lines that had been sprayed with mustard gas, his relatives said that he never was the same once he returned alive back in the USA. So the movie definitely paints that picture. I mean, we see lots of dead bodies and the number count is extremely high and heartbreaking, but we also see those who survive and we see how they have been devastated by what they experienced there. It's fascinating to see the German perspective of World War I. What's even more amazing is that even after this grisly war, Germany was at it again just 21 years later. Felix Kammerer does an excellent job as the young, naive German soldier. I had never seen him in anything before, but he did a fantastic job. And the others in the cast also were excellent, uh, giving very realistic performances. And because the movie is originally German, you probably are not going to be very familiar with most of the cast. There is one actor whom you will recognize. His name is Daniel Broom. So other than that, it'll seem like these are real people on the front lines. They definitely don't look like actors playing a role. There's incredible cinematography by James Friend. And at several points in the movie, we hear these 
disconcerting musical tones or sounds really reminding us of the impending doom and that all is not well on the western front it is it makes you go oh because of these these sound effects and it's a really interesting technique the ending is just a solid gut punch to your heart. Now, if you've read the book, you know what's going to happen. But if you don't, no spoilers. I don't want to tell you. The whole thing is just brutal. I keep saying that word. So when I thought about the things I didn't like, I couldn't say, oh, well, it's bloody, you know, gory and brutal because that's war. But um, I, I think because of the long length of the film, you truly feel beat up and exhausted by the end of the movie. So just fair warning, if you are not up for that, then this is not your movie. <laughs> now, let me give you some tips for parents. This is also not an appropriate movie for children for and for very sensitive adults, I think. We see tons of dead, bloodied, gruesome bodies, missing limbs and all of that, disturbing, horrific images, explosions and destruction, hand-to-hand -hand combat that is just awful. And um, those are all the horrible things, but they're done very well. And then there is some French and German that are spoken with subtitles. That's not a bad thing. That's just something for kids. But don't have your kids watch this. So some of the themes that are illustrated very well in the movie are war and anti-war and even the futility of war. Brutality, humanity, chance, survival, fate, and courage. So I didn't write down any funny lines because this really is a dramatic movie, but I'll share some interesting lines with you. I always try to write down funny lines and interesting lines on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. So you can go over there to see all of it. Um, but here are some that I thought were interesting. Uh, one soldier early on in the movie says men are beasts. And he doesn't mean so much in the, well, maybe he does, in the brutality that men are capable of, but also that we are beasts of burden, you know, that it's the, the brass, the high generals at the top that just say, do this, do this, go over there, go over there, with almost no thought for the humanity of it all, that these are sons and daughters, and well, some daughters, not in World War I, but fathers and sons and brothers and cousins, you know, who were just being easily sent to the front lines with hardly without a thought. Uh, another soldier says, Germany will soon be empty. And I thought that that was interesting because you see the, the German lives that are taken as well as the other countries who were in the war. So one line that the actor Daniel Bruhl says, I think, did I call him Broom earlier? It's Daniel Bruhl, spelled B-R-U-H-L. But anyway, he plays a character named Matthias Ersberger. And somebody is telling him, oh, you know, the fighting in the war is, uh, is a great honor. And, you know, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> and he says, my son was killed in the war. He doesn't feel any honor. And that kind of hits you with a knife to the heart too. So I definitely want to tell you about some other movies that I think are equally awesome. The first one is a recent movie called 1917. And what makes that movie truly outstanding is it's filmed to look like it was taken in one shot. It's amazing. And just the camera work and the direction alone are fantastic. But the movie also shares uh, that humanity and these individual lives and how they were affected by the war. Another one is War Horse that was so popular as a book and as a movie that they turned it into a Broadway play. And you think, really, how could the war be a Broadway play? But it was outstanding. And then another one that I just think is so remarkable is really more of a documentary of World War I. It's called They Shall Not Grow Old. And what they did is colorize old black and white footage that they found. And they actually had to invent technology in order to recover some of this film. So you see the black and white and then it's colorized and these people just come alive right off of the screen. It's incredible. I highly recommend all of those. I will queue up my review of 1917, since that's the most recent one. So you can watch that right after you watch this review. And I think that you'll really enjoy that one as well. 
Thank you so much for watching and especially for subscribing. I really appreciate my subscribers who come back to see other movies and what I have to say about them. And if you are new to this channel, subscribe. I hope that you enjoyed this and it gives you a kind of a taste for what this film is all about so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. I've got all kinds of computer things that are beeping at me. Anyway, visit me over on Instagram if you have a minute as Movie Review Mom, but also as Trina Boyce. That's me. And you can see some of the books that I'm writing, my online courses and other nonsense. Have a fantastic day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.